after you've installed those packages, let's take a look at just some simple OpenCV code. This is the code that we actually used for our FSL bot to be able to see a ball and to navigate to it. Um, yeah. Oh, um, one other thing that you might want. So I'm using Vim right now. The Beagle Ubuntu does not standardly come with any sort of text editor. To install those, it's sudo in apt get install and Vim or Emacs or whatever sort of editor you want. Um, and they're all standard Ubuntu packages. So I know a lot of you young kids like to use Emacs. So to install that, it would be apt get install Emacs like that. And again, we already have that installed, so nothing happens there. Okay, so I like Vim myself, so let's open up our OpenCV Python directory. The first two lines here, import CV and import NumPy, those are, the, those are like include files in C++. And they're telling Python to go out and get those libraries and the, the bindings to those libraries. Um, the next thing that you would do whenever you're doing an OpenCV application is you need to get a capture um, for that application. So here you see this find ball thing. Uh, that's just to make the variable static so that we're not doing a new capture every time the function is ran. But really you could just say capture equals CV dot capture from cam zero. And that will grab a link to the device, the very first webcam that's plugged into your BeagleBone or BeagleBoard or even just regular Linux. And that, that's just kind of like a pointer to that device. Now, if you want to actually work with an image from that device, the command is cv.quarryframe and then the capture device variable that you previously defined. In ours, it's findball.capture. And that will kick out a image um, and if it's working with the device, if it's not working, then it will return none in Python. Um, the next thing that we do in this function is we create this circle store variable. Um, when your a future variable in here stores all the circles found in an image into this circle store variable. Um, you have to define it every time because every time OpenCV opens and uses uh, this variable or stores values into it, it resizes that variable. And so if you tried to use it a second time, then your variable, and you got more circles than you have size to handle them, then it's going to crash and not work very well. So this creates a matrix, a 1 by 50 matrix. Really, I don't know why they didn't use an array, but they didn't. And it's of type cv.cv underscore 32 floating point count three. So that means that there are three different variables in each of the entries of this matrix. Um, and those variables will be the x coordinate for the circle, the y coordinate for the circle, and the circle's radius in that order. The next command we use right here is cv convert color. Um, that changes the image from its current RGB standard color format to a YCRCB um, color format. The reason we did that is because the YCRCB color space is more closely matched to the color space that we perceive as humans. So if we see two things that are blue, for example, we YCRCB would have those two colors much more closely together, whereas RGB would have those colors a longer distance apart from each other. So we convert the color of the image and we store it in this findball.inner variable. After we've done the color conversion, we do an in-range um, uh, in range scalar search through it. So it's looking through this findball.inner for anything that falls within this minyov to maxyov range. And those two variables are defined up here. So anything that's you know, greater than 40, less than 230, and so on and so forth through these variables will be stored as a white pixel and anything that is less than or that doesn't fall in that range will just be stored as a black pixel instead. After doing this in-range search, we do a smooth on the image, and that removes a lot of tiny noise, but it also makes it so that if you have maybe a whole bunch of black specks in, your, in whatever you captured, that those black specks would disappear. Um, it's very useful. It makes, it, a lot, it makes most of the algorithms work quite a bit better. 
After doing the smooth, we do an erode, which takes anything that's black and increases the size. So if you had a semi-large black speck in your system, in your picture, it would get rid of that black speck, um, reducing the amount of false positives or false uh, reads that you get. Uh, finally, this cv.hue_circles command right here is the actual command which goes through the image and finds the circles. Um, the variables for it, the findball.thresh, that is the previous image, um, the filtered image that we've uh, computed previously. Circle store is that circle store that I described earlier. This is where all the circle information gets stored in, too, hence its name. A cv.cv hue gradient is a specific parameter that describes how the algorithm will function. Um, there's several different ones that you can read up on your own time, but basically this one right here is the one that works the best for this situation that we're using, but there are others available. This one is the resolution of the image that you're using. Technically, we had a 4 by 3 resolution, and so this should have been a 1.3333 value, but 1 works perfectly fine for us, and we saw no need to change it from there. These next two variables, 120 and 275, control different uh, tuning uh, parameters for the algorithm, for the hue transform algorithm. Uh, we literally got those ones through guess and check, so yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm not sure what the 17 was, but it's important. And again, we got it through guess and check. This 2 and 250 are the minimum and maximum radius of the circles to be found. So if a circle is not um, of size, does not have a radius of size 2, or its radius is bigger than 250, it will not be included in the results. After we go through and we find each of the circles um, in the image, we want to go through and uh, find the biggest one in that image. So this block of code does just that. Um, because of the way OpenCV works, you can't just iterate through the arrays like you normally would in Python, because if there were no circles found, then the array is uh, size 0, and Python crashes when you try to, try to iterate through it. So the first thing that you need to do is check that the circle store columns are actually greater than 1. Um, this prevents a lot of issues. After doing that, we convert the array into a NumPy circle array, which just uh, is much more convenient to work with. Um, because this was a 2x2 two two matrix, and believe me, I would not have used it, I'm uh, sorry, a 1x50 matrix, and I would not have used it if I didn't have to. Uh, all of these variables have to use this zero index here to specify that it's the first uh, row inside of it. And then this column number just indicates that this is the first circle within all of those. So we start off by saying our biggest is the first circle found. And then we say for each of the circles in the circles, so going through each of the elements of that array, check and see if the circle, um, if the circle's radius right here, which is this two value, is greater than the biggest circle found. Um, if it is, then set the biggest equal to that circle. After you've finished going through it, return the biggest. If there were no circles found in the image, then this algorithm will return none. Um, that's it. Good luck. <laughs>